Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is 3 7th, March 7th, 2019. And I'm going to hand this right over to Miss Vegas to give us our watch list for tonight. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. The uh, markets were definitely red again. So uh, we always try to see what we can find. So definitely talk about BPTH, DFFN, SAEX with news after hours. NM and TXN also had some news. So let's start with BPTH. So BPTH is Biopath. You know, Jim and I talked about this uh, not that long ago, where it was actually under the five bucks. I cannot believe where the stock has gone. Um, but they did have some news that they had interim data update from their phase two study that showed an improvement, clinical improvement uh, with the clients. Um, with their phase two drug called BP-1001. This is for the acute myeloid leukemia, which they classify as AML short term and uh, provides its plans for the compound clinical development of moving forward registration. So um, this was actually uh, well received and um, uh, obviously this the market liked it and uh, obviously the stock reacted quite positively to this news. So I'll just turn it over to Jim here to actually talk about uh, this chart and what went on because this has been nonstop, up, I'm gonna say all week, oh, right yeah. Jim? Oh yeah, and we talked about this yesterday in the room and also we mentioned it last Friday um, as, a, as a, when it broke out a little bit. And let me pull up the, uh, let me pull up the 10-day chart real fast. I got this pretty well clustered up because we've been on this thing from, from day one. But we had Friday, we had a little breakout on this stock. And I'm going to post this up here so you can see it. And that's when we called it out. Then it had a correction. It, it held back and it corrected for a couple days. Not very bad, a bad one, but it did pull back. And so I'm going to bring this up to the five-day where we can get a better look at it now. 15, five-minute. You saw all them blue lines there? That's how we played it yesterday. I mean, we were in and out of this stock. I was calling out the the uh, calling out the the three white soldiers. We had a couple of them. We had a, a pullback. We had like a a pennant wedge, and I just loved it. And here today, she just took off like a dickens. Now this float is under a million dollars, so that really gave it the mustard for it to run. I'm going to turn this into a three minute where we can probably get a better look at the candles. So today, pre-market, it started taking off. It was alerted into the room and it ran all the way up here to about 28.66. And uh, she pulled back. She hit that uh, 20 SMA a little bit. I called this breakout here. And then she went ahead and ran on all the way up here to about 73.52. And then by that time, I mean, I was telling people to get out of it a lot sooner. We had some real nice runs on it. It pulled back. It got hot, halted many times. It run into to the uh, to the um, 50 SMA right here. Bounced up. Hit my resistance level at 49. Pulled back to that support level again right around 28, right around 30 bucks. Bounced up, and then we called it out in the room. We had another pennant flag right here. Breakout. She run up right before close up to 44.90. And then she kind of pulled back again pretty hard here right before the close and then bounced on up. Now what I liked about this trade here, and I'm going to pull it up, is it was an easy call off the VWAP too if you were afraid to get in it. It did touch down to that VWAP four different times. And especially on this one right here after that huge breakout. And then on the way down, it got halted two or three times. And I, I played that halt, one of them in a way. And I got in it, 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 it paused, it, it halted, and then it dipped on down and hit that VWAP. And I held on to it, and it ran all the way up to 44.49, and then pulled back and hit that VWAP twice. And that was quite impressive. So... You know, I don't always just use my moving averages. I use other charts too, and I don't like to complicate them that much. So this was the VWAP chart right here. And after hours, we're at $37 right now. But this was an incredible call. I called it out real well yesterday in the room. 
and I say it's probably going to be a, a good week trade on it. And if it broke out of resistance, we'd see what we did today, and we sure did. Sure enough, the <laughs> stock ran all the way to seventy three fifty two, and you know it it was run mostly on emotion because it was definitely running too fast and too hard. But it being a low float and having that news it did break out so let's keep the watch on this tomorrow tomorrow I think if it does pull back I'm gonna play it off the VWAP and off my moving averages and that's BPTH and good luck to you and the next one we're gonna talk about is DFFN yes so this DFFN is uh, for diffusion pharmaceuticals and you know this float uh, is actually not that big it's only got 3.26 million shares in the float. And, you know, started noticing later in the day, actually, I said, you know, this stock looks like it's going to have a little reversal. And the RSI was pretty high and there was a MACD crossover. So I thought, this looks good. I gotta, I'm got i going to have to alert this trade. So we did share the idea that, you know, this might be something that people may be interested in, in trading. And... Um, you know, this, this, uh, there is no news on the stock, no news on the company. Now, the only thing is that the company is reporting their uh, month end, uh, their, their fourth quarter at the end of this month. And last time they did report, they did mention they had $11 million of cash and uh, also uh, had consumed $7.7 .7 million during the first three months of the year. So they also had a clinical trial that was going on and a 22 subject phase three trial called intact, which is a newly diagnosed, um, live blastoma patient. And hopefully that one though is going to take a while guys, like honestly two years. Uh, so we're not really into that one. And they have another one that they're looking to hopefully complete in 2020. So, uh, let's just see what they have to say. I mean, I will say this low floater. There's no news. Um, I do like the fact that, you know, for a biotech company that they actually have some cash. So I think that's very good because, you know, these these um, clinical trials, especially phase two, is the most expensive of the phases. So phase three is great, but phase two is so expensive. It's the most expensive. So that's why I'm happy to see that they actually have working capital, which is great because Hopefully, there's no no need to do a uh, offering or a reverse split. So that's really good to see for a biotech company. And I'll just turn it over to Jim because, I mean, I alerted this one here around 650. And it's uh, ran all the way up to around 738 after hours. Even I saw it in the 770s. Uh, but, Jim, you know, let's talk about this chart because... That was a pretty good uh, move it had from the uh, alert that we spotted. Oh, yeah. And you know the best thing about this one here? It landed right into a lot of my old resistance trend lines and supports because I've played this before. And all these yellow ones from are from last year. I started off with blue trend lines this year. And this is the only one that I've added today. And that was at 712. So let me look at, at the uh, yearly chart. I might erase some of this stuff. Yeah, this thing's real clustered up. So I'm going to erase it all. First, don't, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and erase it all. Clear this drawing set. And I'm going to take these out so I can have more room to figure to draw these trend lines up for you. But yes, this, they bounced up right into all my old trend lines almost perfectly. And I added a new resistance today. So there's a resistance right here at 748. That's where I'm going to start this off with. And you're going to get you a free charting lesson out of tonight's video class. Right now, I'm going to draw another trend line here at 662. We're going to, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to see how, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> That's much better. So we're going to draw another trend line right here around 621. Then I'm going to put another one right around here, right around this six, five, 596. And I'm going to show you how these things work. And I bet you they fall right in today's pattern, pretty much. We're going to draw another one right down here, right around 498. I see another one right here, 
right around 436. We had a real beautiful breakout on this stock today. And I see another one right here I'm going to add. And that's right around the 407 area. 4 360 and we'll go on from there so I'm going to break this down to a 20 day look at the 20 day I want to see if I need to add any other trend lines to it and I see one right here I want to add and one right here then I see a resistance we did pop up after hours up to 783 she has pulled back here let's look at the tape and see if there's any motion going on right now we're at 773 773 so it did bounce back up after hours I'm going to change this to a daily one minute now and try to find anything that I missed well it looks pretty good don't it looks like everything's falling right into shape we got the trend line here I could add one right here so I'm going to do that then I'm going to add another one right here now that don't look as fogged up as it was and I'll put one right down here so I had three more trend lines to it on the daily one minute this is what I see I see a pullback to this first support here, maybe at 722. I'm going to change that to a red line. So that's going to be my one of my pullbacks. It's almost like a double top right there, but it, look at the trend as it went up. It stayed right into this channel. So I'm going to draw me a, a, a trend line going up on it. <clears throat> we'll start it off right down here. And we'll hit it right in, right in about there. Runs right into one of my other trend lines, and then we're going to top it off right about here. Then there's a little pivot point. Whoop, got to get rid of that. So there's a little pivot point line that goes right up in here, too, and that probably lent runs right there at that support level at 723. So I'm going to make that 723 my strong support. It has pulled back a little bit now. We're at 738. We had 773, so it's getting close to that trend line right there. And if I'm going to have a bottom support right here around 671, so I'm going to change that support trend line. You see how that fell right into place? We're going to take this. And we're going to make that a red line. That's going to be another support. So we've got the first support at 723. Right now we're at 738. The second one is at 672, and then I'm going to draw me another one right here at 643. These are the three support levels that I need it to hold, and if not, it can pull back to this one right here at 596. This is DFFN. So let's look at the yearly chart again and try to find further resistance. So I'm going to pull up the 20-day. We're not going to do that, so we're going to go up to the 180. We got a 180 high right here at about 809. That's going to be one of my resistances. Need to change this. Move that to about that 809 area. Then I've got another one right here at 851. Then we had a high up here at 10 1020. So I'm going to go ahead and put that right there at 1020. That's going to be the long high on it. So let me pull up the daily one more time, the 20 day. We're going to see if we can hit these two supports, but look at the breakout it had today from 362 all the way up yesterday, all the way up to about, oh, had a, a high of 783. So something like this looks a little overextended, which it is. And we're going to see where this thing pulls back to. And maybe you're going to get you a dead cat bounce on DFFN. And remember, that's a dead cat bounce all the way back down here to that $6 level. And that's why I'm going to change this little red line here. And I do believe this will be a good play tomorrow. But you're just going to have to play the dead cat bounce pullback after hours unless you wants to break out. And the next one we're going to talk about is SAEX. Okay, news. well... This one here is SA, SA Exploration, and that had news after hours. And, uh, you know, this is another low float. And, you know, this one had a lot of 13 Gs last year. Um, and the news was that um, they have a combined uh, $60 million of new projects in Alaska and Southeast Asia. So um, they, 
the CEO, who's Jeff Hastings, was mentioning that, you know, these projects are the product of their hard work and their market positioning and rebalancing the capacity and demand for the niche markets. And they said that the, po- the project in Alaska will utilize the remaining capacity of their North Slope crew for the winter season. season. And then they're going to actually book the same crew for next winter. So that's fine. Um, but I will say this. I mean, this stock is a low float and all, but it's have a hard time to go back up over $8 plus. So, I mean, this is a tough stock, I think, for playing to trade. Um, so it's up, you know, Jim will talk about the chart and what he sees. But I mean, the news is good, but uh, not easy to trade this stock. Unless, of course, you know, there's good news here, but it always um, pulls back all the time. So I'll turn it over to Jim and he can tell us all about it. Oh, yeah, this is definitely <laughs> a breakout if I've ever seen one on this stock right here. I mean, a huge breakout. And when I mean huge, this thing had a bottom today of right around 352. And here mm-hmm. we are up at 614 after hours with a mini pullback. Right when the news came out, this, you know, to, I guess this was good news for the stock. Definitely. So I've been playing this. We've played this stock a few times and it does pull back on the, on like it did last year. And this, I think it's the first time this year I've actually looked at it. Well, I've looked at it a couple of times, but I've been all over this trade. You can see by the yellow lines that I put on here last year. And I'm going to pull this up to a 20. This is the 20 day. So I'm going to look at the yearly chart real fast. I had a, I don't know to know to believe all this here up in here how high it got 73.80. But you can't read much on that, so I'm just going to pull it up to the daily and try to figure out where we're going to go with this. I see a support level here at 550 for the first pullback, and I will play it off my four moving averages, which is the 20 SMA the 50, the 100, and also the 200. And they look like they're pretty well spread out. So when I start watching this 20-day cross down over the 50, that's when I want to try to escape the trade and play the pullback. First support is going to be right around this 571 area. The second one's going to be right down here at 550. And if she wants to drop a little more, I'm looking at probably a 528. And then we've got it. I'm going to go ahead and erase all these lines and get them out of here real fast. Start fresh. Because then I can draw these supports out a lot better. Because this is a breakout and I want to be precise with it. So I'm looking at a, at a support level at 530. I'm looking at another one right here at 501, 5 bucks. Looking at another one here at 481. Then I'm seeing another one right in here right around 450, 451. So that's what I'm looking at. And I'm going to pull up a 20-day just to see if I can see anything different. I'm doing it backwards. I see another one right here. I'm going to put a resist support level at 520. And then I'm going to go down a little bit farther here, right around 5, 432. And I'm seeing another one right here, right around my favorite favorite number of the favorite number that I've had with me ever since 1980, 401. That's my old employee number. So I do play off that number sometimes, believe it or not. Vegas is, Vegas will vouch for that. And then I'll have a low support down here around 369. So this is what I see. I see a pullback, and I'm, I'm going to put another one right here at 572. Then I'm going to put a resistance right here at 614. So I see it pulling back to this previous high here at 520. And that's going to be my solid support. I'm going to turn that into a red line real fast because I don't want to lose my thought on it. And I'll know I'll be telling myself, okay, that's going to be my final. I don't want it to break below that area. If it does, we're going to hit this other support level right here at 450. I'm going to change that to a red line. I want to play extra caution with this because I know how this trade handles itself. But this news was fantastic. It would have not reacted this way if it wasn't. And let's make that clear. That's that. I don't think I've seen this candle jump up like this in a long time. So this could be a continuation on a low float stock. There's been many people that have really wanted this thing to run. 
and it has pulled back to a year to a bottom down here today i mean you can see it back here 20 days ago back here when it was at 340 and actually a support level which is pretty close to that 350 area so this is what we're going to see tomorrow if it doesn't break this 614 after hours which is going to be a double top it's going to pull back to the support level at 520 and if that doesn't hold we're going to see it come back down here to 451 and I really don't see it going any lower than that not tomorrow and and tomorrow is Friday so you always uh, play Friday differently than you play Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday I kind of play a little with a little bit more caution and play breakout stocks on Thursday and Friday and today was a day that we did play a lot of breakout stocks and some of them were mentioned here on the uh, on the aftermarket report so this is SAEX keep it on watch I've got three to, you're able you're feel free to pause this video and write these numbers down even save the chart I don't care just I just want you to, to remember these numbers and play off some of these supports if they match yours don't play off my numbers make sure that you're equivalent to playing with them and that's going to be SAEX and the next one we're going to talk about is another shipping company that was alerted in our room today, and I kind of like it. And that's going to be NM, another bottom play. NM. Right. So this one here, Navy Awesome Marathon. So, I mean, this opened up at 174 and went as high as 195 today uh, during the market hours. Um, even after hours, it's actually holding up around there. I'm seeing some buys on the tape here. Uh, volume's been about 873,000 plus shares. And, uh, you know, this company, Navios, I mean, it is a, a shipping company. They specialize in uh, cargo, trading, storage. And they've been in business for 60 years. And, um, you know, they have ship, you know, these, these huge cargo ships. And um, obviously, they are a carrier um, that goes through different uh, parts of the world to obviously um, provide, um, you know, distribution across through the sea. Um, and it here was interesting because suddenly volume surging. And so that's interesting uh, about the company. And when you see like a major volume surge out of nowhere, I mean, it's to look at. Now, they did have uh, some news on March 4th. Um, and they did mention that, you know, some sort of like, ser ten, you know, series of stocks that were tendered for cash and some notes. Um, so nothing, you know, uh, concerning there, but there's no really news news about, you know, what they're doing as a company. So I'm just going to turn it over to Jim really and just talk about this. This is really kind of like a, a bottom, bottom plate, uh, stock. And then suddenly had a major volume surge here happening. And, um, you know, this used to be at one time, you know, like a $9 plus stock. So this is really a huge, huge hit. And now it looks like it wants to try to do something. Um, the float's not that big either. It's about 9.02 million. So, Jim, what's happening here with this uh, Navios Maritime? Well, I'll tell you what, man, this is a beautiful little, I mean, it's definitely playing at the year's bottom. It was called mm -hmm. out in the room today. So let's pull up the year and let me have a little gander at it. We had a high up here around 1290. She sold off. She bounced up a little bit. Then she kind of had created a little ascending triangle, but didn't want to go ahead and continue. And a lot of times when you see a, uh, a stock that drops like this, and you think you're seeing an ascending triangle, you're actually seeing a descending one. And she definitely pulled back again. She ran up into the moving averages, kind of hovered around that 20 most of the time. And she's been below it. We respected it a couple of times, but definitely. So today we're respecting it. We're running into that 20, which is a good sign right here after hours. We hit 191. And I'm going to draw a couple other trend lines in here for resistance levels. And I do believe this is oversold, an oversold stock. And I do believe we can probably get a bounce off of it up to, to a new resistance levels. Because we do it did hit that yearly, yearly bottom uh, today. 
and she started bouncing up. So and shippers haven't been running that good. I figured they'd run a lot better last year, but they didn't. So let's pull up the 20 and have a little look at the 20 day real fast. There we go. I'm going to draw another trend line right here. I'm showing you a lot of chart lesson today in this aftermarket report. I know. That's really good. This is helpful. I hope you're well, enjoying it. I hope it. everyone's you know, paying attention because this is a good way to learn because Jim's explaining it live. Yep. And here we're going to pull back another support level right here. So we did hit the year bottom at 169. She has bounced up pretty healthily, healthy today after hours. She did run up to about... 199 which I do see a support level at 2 and we do have a real solid support level right here at 194 so when we come in tomorrow we could see a little pullback on this trade not much but I do believe it's in motion and what I mean by in motion I think it it's gonna go ahead and bounce up a little more let's look at the 10 days see if I missed anything no I did not so let's go to the day. So we've got resistance levels on this 10 day. We'll just go with this. This will be fine. If it pulls back any, I see another little support level right in, right about in here. And what I do, what I look for, I don't base my trend lines off wicks. I base them off the base of the candlesticks. That's where all the strength and the mustard is. The wick is extra credit. But when I do break that base, I use the wicks for new resistances and maybe new supports if they line up well. So here we are after hours at 195. I think we can run this. It can pull back. If it does pull back, 183 is going to be a solid support. 183. So let's turn that into a red line. And I'm going to make that 183 a solid support level. I did call it for kind of was hoping it would pull back when we called it out in the room. I think we, it was mentioned, oh, I started looking at it when it was at 180, 179. And I can tell right here why that 179 looked good to me for a pullback. So I'm going to draw one more real red line right there on that 179 just to see for a low support if I wanted to make this trade. And if we break the resistance up here at $2, 199 we're going off to the races. We'll hit 209, 217, and let me pull up a 20 day, see if we can get any more out of it. Yes, we can. So please pause this tape, write down these numbers on this chart right now. And we could have a we could be have a breakout on this thing up to the 200, which is right around 205. We want to break that 209 area, 217 up to 228. But I see this 217 as a real solid resistance. As you see this channel right in here for a week. See that channel between that 209 and 217. So this stock's way oversold. We did get in on the, on the bounce today. It was called out in the room by one of our local uh, traders in the room. His name is Stock Authority. And he, you know, he's, he gets on voice every once in a while. You can listen to him, some of his calls. So... And he does his due diligence, and then I go over the charts, and I make sure that, you know, they're, they're decent stocks to, to, to mention. And we're going to mention this one after on the aftermarket report. And it is a shipper stock, and I do like the company. So here we are at 217. If we can break that resistance, we can run it on up to 228 to 237. And maybe up here right around the 248 area, and we can hit all these other resistance lines. But I did call pullback. Pull back around 279 to 283 channel. And I'm going to turn that into blue real fast so I can remember that when I come in in the morning. I like to do that. See how we touched down here once before? I just now noticed that. And we're going to turn this little channel in blue. And I'll remember that tomorrow. And if I hit close to that channel, I'm going to go ahead and scalp this trade all the way up. I won't swing it. I'm, I like to scalp. So this will be a scalper trade for me. For others, it could be a swing trade. And I'm not sure if this thing has options or not, so we're going to look at that real fast. If not, I might be looking at options, Which too. Which one's that one? NM. Um, NM? Nope, no I options. I can tell you. Yep, no, it does. No, options available. Yeah, it does. Actually, sorry, it does have options, yeah. The only thing is with that one, I mean, I don't know how much open interest there is. It doesn't look very active for no, anything. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Not at all. So... I mean, it would be hard to 
Exactly. I mean, you could buy them, but the problem is if there's no one that's going to want us. Exactly. You know, I hear yeah, you. The, yeah. So, okay. So that that's the <laughs> we'll stock. Keep an just eye, though, I, you never know, you know that It's always good <laughs> to keep on your toes. Yes, that and could look change. Look at things like that. Yeah. So let's see if we can break this resistance at 194, which we have. And we've got to bring it up to two bucks and try to run into this new channel here of 209 and 217. And that's where I would call it a pretty hard resistance. And if the volume exceeds price, we could probably break that 217. And the next one we're going to talk about. Oh, I did have one. That was TXN, Miss Vegas. Yeah, so TXN, I just wanted to just mention, I mean, that one was um, that one there that we mentioned the other day because the uh, fat cat option calls. Um, now he paid 135 and said, you know, keep an eye on this. Maybe you could get it for cheaper or, or it depends where you, if you like it or not. I mean, the stock's pulled back a little. So the option cost is at 105, 106-ish. Um, there was news that they did come out with a new and improved line of graphics graphic calculator has faster processor, um, more interactive mathematics and coding features that will help bring what they call STEM, which is the science, the technology, the engineering, and the math, bring it all together for students. So this is a new product, and it actually helps people, like students that need to use this calculator, uh, to visualize important abstract concepts, not just in math class, but in science and computer programming courses. So I'm going to see and wonder if this new product is actually going to attract more people wanting to buy this new product, new new sales. So keep on watch um, with regards to the not stock. I am in the option call and I was able to pick it up as well. So I uh, took advantage of the dip here and uh, we'll see. We'll just keep an eye on it. I mean, it's been really hard uh, with option calls. A lot of mine have gone red. Uh, because the markets are red, so it's been really, really tough uh, the last, uh, actually, the whole week, you know. So hasn't been the best week per se, but uh, you know, hopefully things will turn around. But I gotta tell you, you know, you gotta, you gotta just pace yourself. And sometimes, you know what, you sit on your hands and you don't trade, or you look for, you know, reversals, or you look for a swing trade. You gotta learn how to trade different things. You know, sometimes you can't trade what you love trading. So. I just want to just finish that off. Um, but I do want to say one thing before we wrap up today. I do not really normally do a show on Fridays. And, you know, tomorrow is Friday, March 8th. I do want to say um, happy International Women's Day to all the amazing women or the men that have these amazing women in their lives. Um, this is a huge event celebrated worldwide. And... You know, this actually started back in 1911, and um, this is, you know, uh, uh, the, you know, the colors they use is uh, purple, and use the color purple. Um, it's very symbolic, and uh, they actually, you know, it's to basically celebrate uh, women to be successful. Come to you, and you know, just do it, as they say. Uh, a very important day and as a, there's going to, to be um, many stock market ex actually going to be celebrating international day and actually uh, letting the women from the women in ETFS uh, come there and ring the bell the opening bell tomorrow so there'll be all these different market exchanges that are going to have the bell ringing so i think that's great i was actually invited to come ring the bell too um so i unfortunately can't join them for tomorrow because i have to wrap up my week here but i definitely look forward to ringing the bell next year but you know one last thing you know women's day should not just be once a year it's international women's day every day and i have something special for all the women that subscribe and follow uh, check out the website tomorrow, www.ilovestocks. I have something special for the women, and I hope that you will like it. And uh, check out the website tomorrow for the surprise. And Jim, over to you. Yeah, I got one more thing I want to talk about here. Okay, let's hear it. And that's going to be this play of the day. 
And oh, that, yeah. Let's hear it. That was Seal, S-E-E-L. We called, yes. it, called it out with a, one of our um, two-week trial members. He called it out. His name's Tim Martin. He called it out for, at first thing in this morning at 2.07, and we had a high today of 4.14. So that was 100% gain exactly, and this was called out at 7.02 this morning pre-market before the market at my time, and then live in the Midwest. So that was about an hour and a half before the market opened, right? It's around 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock in a way. So exactly, it was up. He's got it up 50% here, but I think that's more like 100%. So this is S-E-E-L, Play of the Day by I Love Stocks. Okay. And well, everyone have a great night, a great trading day tomorrow. Hope it gets better. And uh, we'll see you all on Sunday with our uh, watch list for next week. All right. This is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. And today's date is March 7th, 2019. And we love stocks.